Hey y'all, hi. So, the thing that I do like about trends is that they're sort of like a cultural aesthetic group project. Interpersonal connection through aesthetics. I like that. The thing that I don't like in fashion is that trends are often the driving force behind the mass production of flimsy sort of single-use clothing that doesn't wash or wear very well. Clothes that don't last, end up in a landfill, and cause consumers to go back for more. So today we're going to smile at the good and frown at the bad. I'm going to take you through some summer fashion trends that I think you can easily thrift, DIY, or find in your existing closet. All ways to experience the joy of fashion while sidestepping the vicious cycle of clothing consumption and disposal. If you like this, check out my fashion videos playlist. I'll link it at the top of the description box and in the cards. This channel started as a beauty channel. I still make a lot of beauty content, but I have accrued quite the list of fashion videos. If you click on that playlist, you can watch them all straight straight through. Of course, if you are new to my channel, I welcome you and I hope that you will subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, trend number one, Vogue.com says, if you buy one thing for spring, make it a pair of multi-pocketed cargo pants. A pair of cargo pants is a great thing to keep an eye out for at the thrift shop. Cargo pants have come in and out of style a lot over the past few years, but they've also been being produced in various iterations for decades at this point. And because of the nature of the style, they tend to be produced in sturdy fabrics. It's kind of a utilitarian pant. So it's the kind of thing that tends to last pretty well through wears, get donated in pretty good condition, if not impeccable condition, sometimes come from really good great brands, even like authentic workwear brands like Carhartt, and then be an absolute score at the thrift shop, something that you can buy for $5, but that will basically last forever in your wardrobe. It's also the kind of thing that if you have never wanted to wear it before, if you haven't really been keeping an eye out for cargo pants, it's not really in your wheelhouse. It might not have been on your radar the last time you were at the thrift shop, you know, but knowing that it's trending and seeing imagery of people making it look really fresh and chic for summer this year in 2023 could put it onto your radar, help you open your mind a little bit, broaden your horizons. And when you're in that headspace and you're thinking, mm, I've never really wanted to try this before, but now it's trending and I can see how it could work and maybe want to try it. It's always way better to take that kind of risk on a secondhand piece, on a thrifted piece, on something that's not taking a huge chunk of your budget to buy. It's a little bit harder to DIY a pair of cargo pants. I mean, if you're really handy and you love to sew or you really love to just glue stuff onto stuff and then wear it, cutting a bunch of external pockets out of a garment that you're not going to wear or something that you found at the thrift shop and then sewing or gluing them onto another garment could be a dramatic, creative way to evoke this trend and could end up being really iconic. So if that's your vision right now, don't hold back. All right, trend number two, lingerie inspired, what Vogue.com is calling pillow talk. Stuff that looks like it was designed for the bedroom, but worn in such a way that makes it streetwear or evening wear. Lingerie inspired garments, a great thing to thrift. There is always that section at the thrift store full of weird bits and bobs of lingerie. Sheer lace trimmed camis, fully lace bodysuits. A lot of it has been donated without ever having been worn before. I think a lot of people skirt that section because they're like, ooh, secondhand lingerie. But a lot of that stuff is in pristine condition. You just give it a good wash and you feel great wearing it. Especially if you're buying it at a thrift shop with the intention of wearing it not as actual lingerie, but as part of an outfit. Outfit. So you're repurposing it, taking it home, washing it, and repurposing it into a piece of clothing. So again, it's not a huge financial risk. It's kind of something to play with. And this in its way is such a playful trend. If it makes you a little squeamish, if you're attracted to this, but it makes you a little squeamish, just think about the layering potential, right? So you have, say, a beautiful bra that you wouldn't wear as a top, but that has enough coverage and enough 
structure and style to be semi-visible. And then you layer something semi-sheer on top of that so that you get this kind of peekaboo effect and you're aware that this is something, again, that is on runways right now, that is being produced right now, that people are buying at exorbitant prices to wear because it's so in. And then if even that is too much exposure for you, you could layer a third thing on top of it. Again, like a light jacket, a blazer. It's layers that can make this trend really work. And you can pull those layers, most of them, maybe all of them, from your existing closet. And that's the other way to access this trend without buying anything, even something secondhand, is to take a piece that you kind of thought you would only ever wear inside the bedroom and think about how to layer it in such a way that makes it look and feel intentional for evening wear or for day. Next up, an absolute classic, the easiest thing I feel in the world to thrift. Vogue.com is calling it grunge revisited. I feel like grunge is a trend, an aesthetic theme that we are constantly revisiting. And apparently we're revisiting it again for summer 2023. According to this article, people are out there buying and selling designer flannel shirts. If ever there was a time to keep an eye out for a flannel shirt to be a layering piece while you're browsing at the thrift shop, apparently that time is now. And light cargo pants, they're all over the place, not only because they had a very long moment in the 90s, like the origin of grunge in the 90s, but because we've revisited that trend over and over again since then. It's just been recurring at various levels of intensity, basically without cease since then. So there are all of these iterations of the flannel shirt that have been produced since then. The secondhand market is awash in this kind of thing, both vintage and recent, but all secondhand. So thrift a flannel. I love to wear a button down, especially I've gotten a little more comfortable with wearing button down shirts just as they're meant to be lately, but there was a time when I felt they were like a little bit too much coverage for me, maybe a little too boxy, a little too mature for me back when I was a sweet young thing. But when I found one that I loved, I would wear it just with the top two or three buttons buttoned, sometimes even just the top, not the top button. I would unbutton the top two or three, maybe button the third or third and fourth button down, and then take the flapping ends and tie them to make it cropped and to make it fit my waist. A beautiful way to style a flannel shirt for summer, especially when it's like grunge revisited, you know, a little bit of a fresh take rather than just using it as a slouchy cover up over a slouchy t-shirt, which is more like the way that it was being worn in the 90s. There's also an easy way to DIY this trend, which is to rip up some old jeans, especially if you have some old baggy jeans that you're not really wearing anymore. Refresh them for summer 2023 by distressing them further, distressing them yourself. Of course, you can also keep an eye out for baggy jeans at the thrift shop, but there's something really satisfying about that particular DIY project, in my opinion. Ah, and speaking of DIY, next up, asymmetric hems. Vogue.com calls this a skirt style that's made for movement. I love that. And what could be easier than to take a dress or a skirt that you aren't wearing, that you were going to donate, maybe because it feels like you've grown out of the length of it, you know? It's like feeling a little dowdy on you, maybe always has, because there's so much coverage. I'm not saying that's always true of, I mean, I love a long skirt with a ton of coverage, but if you happen to be in that situation, just try cutting the hem asymmetrically. We're seeing that all over the runway. And luckily this trend is coming hand in hand with raw edges on the bottoms of skirts. And that makes it even easier. You don't even have to finish the hem. And it's, you know, connected to the grunge trend. If you know how to sew and you want to finish the hem and you want to make it look really polished, it's not as though you won't be evoking the trend if you cut an asymmetric hem and then finish it beautifully. Beautifully. I mean, I think you're still doing it, but you don't even have to be able to sew to cut up a dress or a skirt like this. And this is also the kind of thing it's great to scour the thrift shop for with the idea that you're going to cut it, you know, like to look for skirts and dresses at the thrift shop that lend themselves to this and then take it home and give it a try. Okay, this next one is very much about mixing and matching from your existing closet. And I mean, potentially about thrifting, but wearing your existing clothes in a new way is the first thing that springs to mind when I read about the denim on denim trend. Because it's so easy to pair jeans with a denim jacket if you happen to already have one. And I feel like a lot of people do have a denim jacket and just maybe usually don't wear it with jeans because you're like, oh, it's too much denim. Well, it's time to experiment with that. Like, this is the moment. 
If you happen to have a denim button down or an imitation denim button down, which again, you haven't been wearing with jeans because you feel like it's too much, this is your moment. Of course, if you're thrifting, that's the thing to keep an eye out for, right? A denim button down. And for goodness sake, if you're looking for a button down of any kind, a flannel, denim, a crisp white button down, something I love to find at the thrift shop, don't be constrained by the categories of menswear and women's wear or the sizes. Actual sizing of a thing varies wildly regardless of the size on the label. I usually just go through everything in the men's section and the women's section, every size. I just take each piece on its own merits. And I feel like that's especially true of button downs. And lastly, Vogue.com has put up all these pictures of what they're calling goddess vibes. Amid a burgeoning weakness for old Hollywood comes an obsession with draping for spring. So this might be a little bit of a harder sell for DIY. Again, if you're not experienced with fashion, fabrics. It's the first thing that springs to mind for me because I've worked a lot with fabrics. So when I see these asymmetric draped liquid fabrics, it's like you can mess around with a piece of a jersey and kind of try to get it to do that. And you might get it pretty close, you know, because it's sort of an imprecise art. So again, for the, the handy people out there, for people who do like to sew, if you already have a sewing machine, if you have a small collection of fabric, then this of all of these trends is like top of the list of things to try. If that's not you, then, you know, it's more just things to keep an eye out for. And I would actually say, in addition to draping, keeping an eye out for this kind of liquid drape in garments on the secondhand market, when it comes to goddess vibes, long lengths. And combining kind of with a lingerie trend, long sort of semi-sheer lengths. So one thing that occurs to me for this trend is to take a longish dress that you maybe already own or that you thrift that's in a semi sheer fabric but has a slip underneath it or a lining and to remove the lining or take the slip out and then wear it layered over a sports bra and bike shorts or something that you feel comfortable having the silhouette of peek through. So again, playing with those layers but also leaning into length and drape and leaning into goddess vibes with that. At the thrift shop or shopping your own closet or messing around with fabrics, I just think that keeping in mind these concepts of draping and floor length and flowiness and raw edges and semi-sheerness is really inspiring and really opens the door for ways to put together inexpensive, maybe free outfits that feel incredibly fresh and sensual for summer of 2023 because on some level, all of those things have us in an aesthetic grip, like the zeitgeist is in the aesthetic grip of that. And because of the imprecision of it, because of sort of the romance of it, as opposed to something tailored, for example, which is much harder to do artistically. I just think there's a lot of possibility here. Something to keep in mind when you're approaching clothing in one of these ways that are alternatives to just going to the mall and buying the thing. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments. I feel kind of inspired myself. Like I, you know, I used to sew for my work, but my sewing machines are in deep storage. It's been a long time since I had one of them out and there isn't really room for it in my life right now. But thinking about these trends in particular and talking about the ways that one might play with them is kind of giving me the urge and also kind of giving me the urge to go to the thrift shop and just look around and see what I might be able to find. So of course, if you do any of these or if you've done any of this, let me know. You know, I love that. Don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.